Hey there and welcome to the channel. This particular video is made for new people who are completely new to Linux and need some guidance on how to install Linux. So my recommendation is going to be Ubuntu uh, and I will um, I have prepared this video as a guideline for people who already have Windows installed, Windows 10 uh, and they have Nvidia graphics card so I'm going to cover that part as well uh, and they want to install Linux alongside their current Windows installation so they can pick uh, which one they want to boot when they start up their computer. So if you are already uh, familiar with Linux and how to install it, you might want to skip this video, you might not, you can stick around free to be that. Uh, so uh, I am just uh, going to start and uh, I guess let's go. So I have already booted up my uh, freshly installed Windows and the first thing you want to do of course is download Linux. Okay, go to the Ubuntu download page, press download Ubuntu desktop, uh, version 24.04 is the latest one. Just click it and it will start downloading. There we go, now it's downloading 5.7 gigabytes. Okay, while this is downloading, go back one step. Uh, there will be how to install. So they are recommending Balena Etcher. This is a tool that will prepare your USB stick for the installation. Go there, download Etcher. Uh, you can pick installer or portable, it doesn't matter. Let's go with portable. Uh, two minutes left, one minute left, 40 seconds, okay. Okay, when Balena Etcher is uh, downloaded, uh, you will want to start it, but uh, before you start it, you want to download Ubuntu. And while all this is happening, let's go and prepare our SSD. Go to Disk Management. So what I'm going to recommend is to shrink your Windows installation size uh, before you start Ubuntu installation. You can do that from within Ubuntu installation, but in my opinion, it will be slightly easier for you this way. So just right click on your C drive, choose shrink, uh, make a decision on how much you want to shrink it because right now my install, uh, my Windows installation is 476 gigabytes. So let's say I'm going to shrink it roughly 50%. Okay, 200 gigabytes and let it shrink. So now, now we have 195 gigabytes of unallocated space. This is your free space on your SSD. Um, if you have a lot of data uh, scattered around your hard drive, this um, shrinking resizing might take a while. Don't worry about it and just let it uh, finish its, its course. Um, I have personally uh, did, didn't have anything on my SSD because this is a completely freshly uh, made Windows install just for the sake of this demonstration, so shrinking went quite fast. Uh, you can close this page and see how our download is progressing. Okay, we have two minutes left. Let's wait it out. Okay, now that uh, Ubuntu has downloaded, you want to prepare your 8 gigabyte USB drive. Just uh, place it in your computer. Okay, you can close the browser for now. Uh, start Balena Etcher. Okay, choose flash from file, go to your download folder, choose your downloaded uh, operating system, select target, there will be only one target in my case. Uh, you will need a USB stick larger than 4 GB uh, for the Ubuntu installation. Select this and select flash. 
and you will want to choose yes on this prompt okay so this is going to flash on your usb stick now we are going to wait it out a little bit uh, and after the flash drive is finished creating you are going to reboot our machine and just leave it in our computer uh, and your machine will boot from it if it doesn't we will adjust your bios settings uh, to accommodate this okay here we go we have now flashed our usb stick and finished our verification and basically you can just close this and cancel this um, windows is complaining that you need to format this hard drive because uh, it cannot uh, recognize uh, the partition on your usb stick anymore so that's fine just close everything and let's reboot I'm going to go into my BIOS just to show you something regarding the boot process. Okay, this is the BIOS from this laptop. So this is boot priority, right? It has Windows uh, boot manager first and USB stick second. So if I just leave it like that, it will boot from Windows again. And we do, do not want this, we want to boot from USB stick this time. So in my case, I'm just going to drag it on top and basically there is a save and exit here, F10, okay. And this is how uh, we are going to boot from USB stick this time. Okay, uh, you can just try or install Ubuntu, the first option. Okay, once the installer boots up, you're going to be greeted with uh, this screen. Just choose your language. Uh, there are a lot of accessibility options. You can um, go through them and see if you need any of these. So feel free to use them. Uh, select your keyboard. Let's go with default US English for now. Uh, you can of course uh, pick whatever you want and then you can test it below to see if you have picked the correct one uh, do you want to connect to the internet uh, i would suggest that you do connect to the internet during installation because you might be able to uh, pre-download some updates so let's go and do that right now There we go. Internet should be connected and let's go next. We will install Ubuntu. If you just uh, pick the other option, try Ubuntu, it will basically give you the Ubuntu experience without installing it on your hard drive. So if you just want to fool around and install nothing, this is, uh, this is, this is an option for you. Uh, automated installation is not for you, so let's not pick that, go with interactive one. Uh, this might be something to consider. So just the essentials, uh, which means of course what it says, web browser and, and basic utilities. If you want um, everything that Canonical has envisioned that you should be had have, that you should have installed uh, on your default installed, like an office uh, and other tools, you can use extended selection. So let's go with this one for now. Uh, this is important for most of the installation. First of all, if you have nvidia graphics card do you want to put this check mark if you have a wi-fi card almost any of the models you will want to have this option checked barely any wi-fi card has open source uh, drivers uh, do you want uh, media formats basically you will want 
to be able to play multimedia files. So in most cases, you will uh, click both of these check marks. Let's go next. Okay. Um, Erase disk uh, is self-explanatory. It will delete your Windows and you will no longer have anything uh, that you have had installed uh, so far. Manual installation is advanced. This is where you uh, resize partition manually and decide which partition is mounted uh, where. So let's just go uh, to install Ubuntu alongside uh, Windows Boot Manager. Let's go next. Uh, pick your name. Uh, pick your computer's name. Let's call it Republic of Gamers. Uh, your username for your login, your password. And confirm your password. If you uncheck this, uh, the system will always log you in automatically. So for uh, any local security, you want to have this enabled. Active Directory, you definitely don't want this unless you are installing this uh, for your company. Uh, pick where you are located for the correct time zone settings. Uh, I am located in Croatia, so I'm going to use what the system has automatically detected for me. Uh, review your choices. Uh, partition SDA1 used for boot, SDA5 formatted at as extended uh, 4. And let's go. Okay. So the installation seems to be finished now and we are now going to restart. Let's go. You want to remove your USB stick now. And press enter. There we go. The I'm going to interrupt this just for the sec for this moment. Uh, so what is going on right now is that we have now booted into Grub Loader, which is giving us an option to boot uh, Ubuntu or our previous Windows installation. So just press Enter for now and let's go boot into our new Linux installation. Okay, here we are at our login screen. Type your password and login for the first time ever. Welcome to Ubuntu 24. Okay, next. Uh, Ubuntu Pro. Okay, so one of the benefits of uh, Ubuntu Pro is that it will give you live kernel patching. This means that uh, if some critical uh, vulnerability arrives and is patched by Canonical, it will be patched live to your kernel without the need for you to reboot your computer. So it will be live uh, patched. It, it's, a, it's a nice convenience and in order for this to function, you need to have Ubuntu Pro account. So if you enable this, it will ask you for your Ubuntu password. Uh, and um, well, well, you can do that uh, on your own, of course, it's free up to five personal computers and I would recommend you to do that if you are okay with sharing your personal data with Canonical. Uh, for now, let's skip it. Uh, do you want to tell Ubuntu about uh, your installation? Let's not share anything this time. Next. Uh, Let's just finish for now and let's explore our new installation. Uh, in the bottom left corner, you can reach your applications. Uh, you can check if additional drivers are needed. Let's 
Okay. It says that one proprietary driver is already in use. Uh, we do not need to do nothing at this point regarding drivers because during installation we have already uh, told uh, Ubuntu to install the drivers that we need. Uh, this is where you can update firmware for your uh, computer if uh, your hardware is supported by Linux. Uh, this is where you can uh, software update, uh, but this all is going to happen usually automatically. Uh, you can explore your uh, installed applications like Firefox, Okay, Firefox works, we are already connected to internet, uh, this is Thunderbird of course, these are your files. So one of the cool things that you can do, you can go to your files, this, this is your home folder, right? Your desktop, your documents, your download files, and etc. And what you can do with files, you can go to other locations and it will give you uh, access to your Windows installation. So if you have anything in your Windows installation that you want to copy over in an easy way, you can go to users, start, and for example, my desktop. So if I have something on my desktop, I can just copy it over. If I have something in my documents, you can copy it over you to your Linux. It's very easy. Uh, this is your office. LibreOffice is actually phenomenal. I have, I have been using it both on Windows and on Linux for many years. I really love it. It's, it's, it, it's a very good uh, office suite and I recommend you to switch to it even if you already have Microsoft Office. Uh, in my opinion, this one is just better. Okay, let me just show you how you will uh, switch back to Windows when you want. Let's just reboot this machine for now. In your upper right corner, you can change some uh, basic uh, options of your OS. Uh, connect, connect to other Wi-Fi, turn on and off Bluetooth, uh, change the uh, battery mode, switch dark style if you like it. And let's go and restart for now, and restart. So once again we got group, and if you want to boot into your Windows, go down, press Windows Boot Manager and press Enter. And this is how you access your Windows. Okay, everything's still working fine. Let's go check our disk manager now. If you remember, we have deleted, uh, uh, not deleted, we have shrunk our C partition and this one was actually empty. And what has happened here is that Ubuntu installation has filled our empty space automatically without asking us any questions because uh, we have told it to do it automatically and this is the reason why I told you to shrink your windows from within windows and leave an empty space. Now let's go back to Ubuntu. At this point, basically, we are completely finished with our installation and you're free to explore your new operating system. But if you want to stick around for a little bit more, I will show you how to install application from App Center that is made by Canonical. So this is something that I'm going to cover in my future video, but there are uh, multiple ways of installing software on Linux. We have uh, native packages, which are DAB uh, packages on both uh, Ubuntu and Debian and all the derivatives uh, from Debian. 
uh, derivatives uh, that come from Red Hat uh, have RPM packages and then, then we have uh, other distributions that have their own nat native packages. Uh, apart from the native packages, there are flat packs and snaps. So Canonical has uh, created their own uh, packaging system that's called Snap and basically most of what you find in um, Ubuntu store will be Snaps. Snaps are confined applications which have all their um, supporting libraries uh, bundled in the Snap uh, package. If I can put it that, that way, I, I cannot explain it any, any simpler than this. So if you go to uh, search and type, for example, Steam, what is going to happen, you will see that uh, it says that this Steam package is uh, packaged by Canonical. And this is a snap package. You can install it. Whether installing Steam as a snap package is a good idea or not, this is something I'm going to cover in one of my follow-up videos. Uh, but for now, uh, you can simplify your exploring of your new operating system by simply installing from Ubuntu Store. Okay, when the installation is finished, just open Steam and allow Steam to update itself and prepare uh, its own software for the first run. At this point, you can close the Ubuntu store. Okay. Once Steam has finished doing its stuff, you can just launch your uh, authenticator and log in to your Steam account. Okay, let's find a game. When you pick a game for the first time that is not approved uh, by Valve for installation on Linux, uh, either because it doesn't have a native Linux binary or it's not verified by Proton, uh, it will be grayed out. So the thing that you want to do is go to settings, compatibility, and enable Steam Play for all other titles. And press restart later and choose here which version of Proton you want for all other titles. Uh, basically, you will be safe with Proton Experimental, but I choose usually the latest stable version. Uh, in most cases, it serves me just fine. But you can experiment with uh, altering which version of Proton you can uh, use for each individual game title. Okay. Team has restarted. Let's go back to library and choose the same game. And voila, now it's allowing us to install it. Uh, if you create application shortcuts, this will be uh, placed here in your applications menu. So we can leave it like that if, if we want it. Uh, this is where it's going to install. Let's do it. The thing that's going to happen for the first time is that Steam is going to start downloading Steam Linux runtime and Proton 9 because you haven't used it before and then it will start downloading the game. So let's wait it all out.
Okay, now that our game is downloaded, go to the game, press play. The first time when you press play, uh, it will be a slight delay while Steam is configuring it. And this is perfectly fine. On your second run, it will run faster. There we go. Let's pick campaign. Songs. This is where I left off. Okay, it wasn't exactly my intention to show you the gameplay of this game, but it's one of the new games that is coming out in just a few days and I really like it. It reminds me of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Uh, if you know uh, which game is that, then I can promise you you're going to like Songs of Conquest as well. Well, basically this is it. This is what I wanted to show you and uh, thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions regarding uh, installing Ubuntu, configuring anything, if something is uh, possibly not working for you as expected, feel free to comment uh, below. I will do what I can to answer all of your questions. Uh, once again, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.